Look, nobody is for kids getting killed at school, uh, Republican or otherwise. And the argument that Republicans are just okay with this is, is about as dumb as the idea that Democrats want to take away your guns. It's just, it's just not based in facts. It's just not true. What the majority of people want, regardless of political affiliation, what they want are sensible gun laws that uh, protect us from gun violence. So it's, it's really disheartening when politicians get on the air um, and try to deflect from the facts and then say that uh, we shouldn't be politicizing this when in fact them saying that we shouldn't is actually politicizing it. Take, for example, House Majority Whip Republican Tom Emmer of Minnesota. Yeah, well, actually, I think it's a little too soon. I think right now, rather than politicizing these poor victims in this community, I think we all need to take a moment, uh, take a deep breath. Let's let them do the investigation. Let's find out what happened, why it happened. Rather than jumping into the campaign season, it seems like today is a day that we should take a step back and let's get the questions answered before we go rushing to judgment. We've got way too many political people who instantly want to take someone's tragedy and turn it into their political campaign or gain. I, frankly, right now it's too soon. We, go, we need the investigation. And of course, there's Vice Presidential hopeful J.D. Vance, who said that no matter how tough your gun laws are, the solution is not to take law-abiding citizens' guns away from them, which again, is not something anyone is actually saying. When I last checked, the right to bear arms doesn't actually specify what type of arms, and thus it doesn't also imply that one can own whatever type of gun they want. And there's a reason why citizens don't have access to bazookas, that they can't just ride around in tanks or fly A-10 warthogs with, with bombs strapped to them and a Avenger seven-barrel Gatling gun. Yes, we can operate motorized vehicles and fly planes, but there are limitations. You have to be licensed for these things. And just because you can drive a car doesn't mean you can drive a, you know, a, an 18 wheeler. There's different licenses. Uh, just because you can fly a, a Cessna, for example, doesn't mean you're certified to fly a 747. You actually have, have to have training uh, to do these things, to get licensed and also to have insurance, but that's a different discussion altogether. Now, J.D. Vance also had a rather nihilistic response uh, to children and teachers getting blown away at schools when he, in the same statement at a rally in Phoenix, said that it's just a fact of life. Again, his words. And Vance also pointedly pointed out that no parent should have to deal with this. No child should have to deal with this. And yet his only solution was more security which the school in Georgia, by the way, had. Sadly, these, these measures of, of more security and, and such just kind of are starting to feel like the, the duck and cover, get under your desk thing of the 1960s and 50s and so forth to, to protect you uh, from a thermonuclear attack, as if, as if your desk was going to protect you from, you know, from a, a nuclear bomb, right? Just kind of stupid. What's amazing about the Republican argument about not having uh, gun control limits was that it was actually the NRA and the Republican Party who advocated for it uh, in the late 1960s. In fact, it was, it was Ronald Reagan as governor of California who called for it. Well, why? Well, because they saw that black people had guns. Now, they were okay if, if black people were killing black people with guns. But the idea of a black person coming to a white neighborhood and unaliving white people, well, that was, that was something entirely different. Um, and this, was all, this all happened because they were seeing photographs of members of the Black Panthers uh, with guns in public places, which, by the way, was legal in California. Um, this all really came to a head, actually, um, when 30 members of the Black Panthers showed up at the, at the California State Capitol, on the steps of the Capitol, armed with... Um, you know, with uh, 357 Magnums and 45 caliber pistols and shotguns, and declared the time has come for black people to arm themselves. Well, translation to uh, you know conservative politicians and their constituents was, we're going to kill Whitey. Of course, this, this didn't happen, right? That was never actually the case. 
However, today politicians uh, use this same argument themselves. However, the gun control laws at the time wasn't just about limiting the right to bear arms, but it was actually targeted about getting rid of certain types of guns, um, particularly the guns that black people used in the inner cities, like the Saturday Night Special, and limiting who owned guns, and along with increasing the licensing requirements and inspections of gun dealers. In California, they took it actually a step further and they wanted to make sure that no one would have a loaded weapon in the Capitol building. So it was a little bit of a self-preservation there. Today, the, the, the solution is not to do nothing. And one thing won't solve it all. And if, if limiting the types of guns available seemed like a good idea um, to protect our children from the supposed uh, impending wave of marauding inner city blacks, then surely we can protect our kids from whites with AR-15s because yes, it's actually the majority of mass shooters in schools are white. Of course, the NRA and their followers should have no problem with any of this because they were in, in support of banning machine guns uh, with the National Firearm Act of 1934 because of you know the, those marauding white gangsters.